Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, as you can probably tell from the title, is going to be so much different than my usual videos, like the cleaning videos that I make. Um, but I have been meaning to film this video for a while now. I've actually put it on my, you know, list of videos that I want to film for months. <laughs> but I haven't actually sat down to film it because I think it's one of the most, you know, vulnerable videos I'm gonna put out there and it just it's hard to talk about but when I posted about my miscarriage that I had you know over I think a year and a half ago now um, I posted about that a video on you know my experience and what happened and I got so many comments and so many messages um, on Instagram like private messages where I talked to other you know women who have gone through this and I think talking about these topics it's not like it takes away from how hard it is but it makes you feel less alone to know that other people are going through this and just to feel like you can talk to someone and you know get it out there to someone who has gone through this and can understand how you feel so that's exactly why I'm filming this video as well because I know so many people are going through infertility or fertility struggles as well um, whether it's you know for your first baby or a secondary um, infertility like we are going through and it's just a hard situation to go through and if I can help one of you feel less alone in this, then that's all I want with this video. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I don't really have a plan for what I'm gonna say, so I apologize if this is a bit rambly. But where do I even begin? Why am I feeling so nervous filming this? As you maybe already know, if you have been following for a while, or maybe you're new so you don't know, but I already have a child, so I have a four-year-old son. I think going through these fertility struggles made me feel even even more grateful than I was before like obviously I was always grateful to have him and I was so happy about it but it made me feel even more grateful and you know made me realize what a miracle it is to be able to have a child so when he was about I think two and something he wasn't even three yet we decided that we want to have another baby we felt ready to try again and we got pregnant, I think the first time with my son Victor, we got pregnant the first month or so of trying, which obviously was really fast. So we were so lucky for that. I realize that now. I don't think I realized it back then because before you go through these struggles, I think you don't expect that it's going to happen to you. Like, you know, some people struggle with infertility and, you know, getting pregnant, but I feel like deep down you always assume it's not gonna happen to you, right? So. It was really easy with him and then when we started trying for baby number two it again happened really fast i think it was the second month of trying that i got pregnant um the second time and i was over the moon it was going to be like a three-year age gap in between them and it was just ideal it was everything i've ever wanted and then as you might know if you've watched my miscarriage video i uh, miscarried that baby at 13 weeks so i went for a scan um i had a scan at around 10 weeks I believe and it looked absolutely fine everything was going well and then I went back for another scan at 13 weeks um, and they told me that you know there was no heartbeat so the baby had passed at 12 weeks and I had surgery for that I went for a DNC because um, it was a missed miscarriage so my body wasn't actually miscarrying my body kept you know going with the pregnancy um, so I had that you know it was a hard hard thing to go through but I feel like deep down, because we had gotten pregnant so fast with my child, with Victor, and then with the second pregnancy, I I kind of thought it was going to happen really fast again. And now, a year and a half later, and obviously I'm still not pregnant, I think the NHS tells you that, um, you know, you need to wait for a year of trying if you are under 35, which I'm 29 now. So they want you to try for a year before they actually do any tests on you. So I guess that's what I did because again, I just assumed it would happen naturally since obviously it had happened before. And I think the first few months of trying, I was just, you know, I was still kind of grieving, but I was actually excited to try again because I felt like if it was going to happen and, you know, it would kind of uh, start becoming a healing place for me to, you know, be pregnant again. But then, you know, months have passed, nothing happened. And I guess I just felt like probably my body, you know, needs more time to kind of heal after maybe the surgery and the miscarriage and everything like that. So I just assumed, you know, in a few more months it would probably happen um, and it didn't. So after a year of trying, which was basically in January this year, 
because I had to wait. So I had my miscarriage in October 2020, I believe. Um, and then I had to wait for two months of having a regular period uh, before we could try again. That's what I was advised by um, the doctors. So that's what we did. Um, it actually took quite a long time after the miscarriage for my regular period to come back. Um, and it was really hard because I had to take pregnancy tests after the miscarriage um, for weeks, like uh, every week or so to test that it was negative and it wasn't yet. Like my body still thought I was pregnant even after the surgery. So yeah, eventually I got, you know, a negative pregnancy test, which obviously meant that, you know, the pregnancy was fully gone, the hormones were gone. So then I got my period again and we started trying again in January 2021. And we had been trying for a year. In those first, I think, six, eight months, I wasn't really stressed about getting pregnant because I felt like it was just gonna happen. Um, and then after those first six, seven, eight months passed, I thought, okay, I'm gonna get some ovulation tests, right? Because I wanted to check if I'm still ovulating, if everything's going right. And then also I think doing ovulation tests kind of increases your chance of getting pregnant because then you kind of know when your fertile window is a bit better, like you can predict it better. So um, that's what I did. I had been using ovulation tests in the past few months um, and at the end of 2021. And then at the beginning of this year, in January, I started going for fertility tests because a year had passed. So I contacted obviously my GP, I went to NHS um, and they were amazing. Like they're honestly always so amazing. I'm so grateful that we have NHS here, but I think, you know, because of maybe the lack of funding, the, there's only so much they can do for you, which is unfortunate, especially if you're going through secondary infertility, but you know, it is what it is. So they did a blood test and that was on day 21 of my cycle. So they checked things like progesterone and um, a lot of other hormones and things that you know could be wrong with your body like I had just general blood tests to see if you're anemic just anything like that I think just a general well-being test so that blood test came back pretty much fine so there there wasn't anything that seemed suspicious on it like like anything was wrong and then I was supposed to have a um, scan with with the NHS and um, I actually got a letter from them a few weeks later after that I got a letter saying um, because I already have a child with my current partner I can't have anything else done on the NHS <laughs> which you know again it's probably because of they're not funded enough they're not allowed to do it but it's just it just sucks because you feel like you're being a bit you know pushed to the side and I get why obviously people who are trying for their first babies it's such a struggle and I get why they should have priority but I also feel like secondary infertility should also be looked into if you know what I mean um so yeah I couldn't have anything else done on the NHS basically so our only other option was to go private which we did kind of in the past month or so and we have started doing um you know obviously more fertility tests to see what was going on and I think the main reason for that is because so at the NHS um, my doctor and my GP were amazing they were really you know really kind they always are but after that blood test came back fine they basically told me you know you got pregnant before you're young um you should just keep trying and it will likely happen so that's basically where i was left at <laughs> after that first blood test um and the reason why i kind of wanted to go private and have more fertility tests done is because well first of all it has been over a year and i haven't gotten pregnant and then second of all I, in the past few months I've actually gotten pregnant three times um, and lost the baby right away. So it was a chemical pregnancy. That's what they call it, right? So you miss your period, you have a positive pregnancy test, you, which obviously means you got pregnant. And then a few days later, I got my period. So that's a chemical pregnancy. You just basically lose the baby straight away. Um, and, you know, sometimes it can just be a chromosomal thing, like the embryo is just not viable, which, you know, I guess it can happen. But in the past few months, it had happened three times. Um, and it kind of made me think, okay, something else must be going on. And even just going through those is honestly so hard because, you know, you get excited when you see that positive pregnancy test and then it's, it all goes away. So yeah, I started going to a private clinic. So we had multiple blood tests done. Um, I had a scan. 
my husband had a test as well which he was completely fine um, and then my test so there are a few things that they think could be wrong which is funny because the tests they did on the NHS some of them were similar to the ones we did privately but the ones that we did privately actually showed a few things that are not in the normal range and I think one of the reasons for that it might be because that's what my doctor said too because when I had the tests done um, privately I actually was pregnant that month so I had a, a chemical pregnancy that month which um, showed that my so my levels my some of the, my hormone levels go a bit off when I get pregnant so even though it was a chemical pregnancy so it ended right away um, the levels were a bit abnormal whereas I think when I did the test at NHS I wasn't pregnant that month I didn't have a chemical so my levels were okay so I think maybe that's why um, they you know they kind of spotted some of these things um, when I did the private blood test um, and the scan and everything like that so there are a few things they think could be the cause of this um, there's nothing major going on I think at least so far I have a few more tests that I'm doing and uh, waiting the results on so we'll see how that goes but so far you know I am ovulating and I think that's one of the you know the main things that they look at um, so that looks promising but there are some hormonal levels that need some help so I have started um, fertility treatment so at the moment I'm taking progesterone in the two week wait so after ovulation until you get your period or obviously a positive pregnancy test and I'm also taking some thyroid um, hormones which is interesting because again um, at the NHS the hormone for thyroid turned out fine I did have some thyroid issues right at the end of my pregnancy with my boy um, and they were fine because obviously they gave me some treatment that back then too so it wasn't anything major but um, when I did the blood test privately they did notice that my thyroid levels were a bit high or low I can't remember but they, they weren't in the normal range and again I think that's because I had the chemical pregnancy that month and so I think my thyroid levels go a bit off only when I get pregnant because I had tests done when I'm not pregnant and they turn out fine so that's quite interesting yes yeah, so I'm getting a thyroid treatment as well at the moment so those are kind of the two main things we are testing now obviously to see how it works because you never know um, and I'm waiting for a few more results which I may or may not get you know more treatment more medication for that I'm not sure depending on the results um, but yeah that's where we are at right now so that's what we're trying and seeing how it goes so my doctor said you know he seemed quite optimistic because obviously we had gotten pregnant before even if it was a chemical pregnancy it means you know I can get pregnant so he said he doesn't think we will need IVF at least not yet it might be something to consider down the line you know if it's still not happening in a few years or something um well, yeah we're not sure yet I think that's one of the hardest things about going through infertility struggles is like you feel like you're in kind of a limbo state where you could get pregnant or you could maybe not get pregnant for years like you just don't know it's so unpredictable there could also be you know a number of other things but um, you know it could also be maybe a complication from having surgery after mi my miscarriage that's a possibility too but to test for that I think you need to be put under and have I'm not sure if it's called a surgery or just to kind of investigate that so uh, you know we're not at that point yet but it might be something to consider in the future it's a lot it's a lot going through fertility struggles and yeah if you are going through something like this as well I am honestly just sending you the biggest hug because I know how hard it is and I'm so sorry that you have to go through this it, it really sucks I've also had it's funny how you know some people ask you when are you gonna have uh, uh, your next baby or if you don't have a baby they're just gonna ask you when when are you going to have your first one and they don't realize how hurtful that can be and I know you know most people mean well like they're not ill-intentioned and for me I feel like if someone asks me just oh do you plan on having another one I don't really mind that question like I'm fine to say yes or maybe um, but if they go into more details or ask you know more info that's when it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable and you know it really hurts like I've had a conversation with another mom at, at a, a play date that we had 
and uh, she you, she had a child kind of Victor's age so they were playing together and then she also had a baby and you know she asked me if we wanted another one I said maybe you know we'll see that's my kind of go-to response because obviously you don't know if it's going to happen or not and you know she kept kind of pushing and going and saying well you need to have it because you want to have them close in age you don't want too big of an age gap and it's like people know those things you don't have to tell them and you don't know who is going through this struggle and you know I kind of held it together while we were there and then when I got home I completely broke down because it's just hard it's hard to go through this so you know if you get kind of insensitive comments or conversations like that I'm really sorry because it's it's brutal <laughs> yeah so I think that's about it for what I have to say so far on this topic um, I might do you know updates in the future I'm not sure I'm not sure how I will feel about that but if you do have any questions about anything related to this then leave them in the comments below um, and if you are going through this please feel free to message me anytime on Instagram um, I always you know respond back to everyone who writes me there because I know how hard it is and I just want you to know that you're not alone and you have someone to talk to. So yeah, I hope you're doing okay. I hope you guys are having a lovely day. I'm sorry, I hope this wasn't too much of a downer of a video. Um, but yeah, I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.